starting us off with number 10, we have The Spirit. This one's from Reddit user Gothsby29, who shared that this occurred a few days after her ex had lost his friend in an airplane crash. The couple took out the Ouija board to use it, and the friend was very present, very scared, and very much wanting to communicate. Now, the duo got a bit freaked out and decided to stop using it, and as soon as they did, the user felt this presence in the corner of the room. She took a deep breath and closed her eyes, and all of a sudden, the planchette started moving around the board, spelling words on its own. Exhausted and now drained, the user took a nap and 30 exact minutes later she bolted out of bed because she saw the skeletal spirit standing in the corner of the room. The spirit ran at her and started screaming with a massive black mouth. The user obviously started screaming and her boyfriend woke up and tried to get it off her but then she just ran straight out of the house. Coming in at number 9 is the Mars Volta. Now the Mars Volta was an American progressive rock band that were active from 2001 to 2012. The guitarist of the band Omar bought an antique Ouija board at a flea market in Jerusalem as a birthday gift for lead singer of the band Cedric. Now, the two started playing with the board in the tour bus after their shows and they ended up contacting a spirit named Goliath. Its responses were innocent at first but Omar got nervous since Goliath started making threatening demands and Cedric was getting more and more obsessed with contacting him. Omar ended up secretly burying the board but that did nothing to stop Goliath. It usually never does. The band started being terrorized with mishaps and chaos after that point. Equipment started having severe problems, Omar's studio was wiped out in a freak flood, their drummer quit and Cedric suffered from a critical foot injury. All this happened in such a short period of time and it all happened after Omar got rid of the Ouija board that he was convinced that these things were happening because of Goliath. And boy, you are not wrong. At number 8 we have the horse. This one was shared by redditor Overdose Baby Blue, who said her mum always used to warn her about using Ouija boards because of what she went through herself. The mum shared that during one instance of using a Ouija board, the spirit they were talking to seemed quite violent and actually had it in for her. She shrugged it off and got in her car to go home as everything was normal. But as she was driving home, a horse that she appeared out of nowhere and started running towards her car. The mum ended up hitting it and killing it in a very gruesome some way, but she was 100% sure it was to do with the Ouija board. Because how the hell would a random black horse appear in the middle of the city in the afternoon? That is not a usual habitat for horses. Like, where'd you come from? Filling an observant slot is the ancient spirit. This one comes from Reddit user Tessa B4, who said her and her friend met a female spirit through their Ouija board that claimed she was 40 years old when she died. She was born in 91 BC and spoke a now dead language, so the user and her friend could only ask yes or no questions. Turns out the way she died was absolutely horrible. Her own mother poisoned her and she had no idea why. The users then asked if that was all she wanted to share with them and it was. Guess when you've been holding on to something like that for so long, you're just good with telling anyone who's willing to listen. Now at number 6 is 10 hours. So this one was shared by Reddit user Lena Rezden who shared when they were about 14 or 15, they played with the Ouija board quite often. One night at 9pm, she was playing with her friend and started getting some very bizarre our responses. The user couldn't remember them now since the incident happened 27 years ago, but the entity did say that he was from Malaysia and that he was there to protect them. That's apparently the last thing they remembered because they blinked and it was suddenly 7am. They didn't go to bed or something, they just literally lost 10 hours of their life and they have no idea what happened in that time or where that time even went. Neither of them remembered <laughs> They just looked at each other and boom, 7am, like, excuse me? I want those 10 hours of my life back. Coming in at number 5 is Get The Boy. This was shared by an anonymous redditor who said their friend mentioned that they had a Ouija board so they decided to mess with it. Big no no my friend. Now initially their friend said no but then she warmed up to the idea and agreed to get it out as long as she didn't have to participate. The user set it up and asked if anyone was there and got no response. Then trying to be a cool teenager as they all are, they said if anything is in here and not talking, you're a coward. And again after getting no response, they just put the board away. About a week later, the user was sleeping during a thunderstorm, how very cliche, I know. They woke up midway to complete darkness and tried going back to sleep. 30 seconds later, they heard someone or something whisper get the boy in a very raspy voice. Thinking it was them just hearing things, the user went back to sleep to then hear get the boy much louder before hearing a door slam shut downstairs. He up and got the hell out of there because he was the only one at home at the time, so... <laughs> We're not trying to mess with anyone. No Ouija entity. No, no. At 
number four is the evidence. Now this one was shared by By Fontes on Reddit, who shared three images of him claiming that's what happened to him after using a homemade Ouija board. He asked the entity a bunch of questions and also asked if the spirit was the one who had scratched his chest a week prior after using the board. And the spirit replied yes, and that it was here for him, and that it was not going to leave him alone. These are the images that he shared. Now, okay, obviously these look really bad, but I don't even know if this is a real one or not. These scratches could have come from another accident or an animal attack, I have no clue, but we kind of just have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But then again, who would just do this for internet clout? Actually, many people would do that for internet clout, but we are gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, people. Filling on number three slot is careful what you wish for. This one really gave me the creeps, to be honest, and was shared by back in Om Nom Nam on Reddit. They shared that about 15 years back, his sister had some friends over and they were all watching a horror movie in the basement. Already the start of a very horrific night, just by the sounds of that. The friends also had a Ouija board with them, so they of course tried it. Dramatically, they started cussing at it, calling it fake and and so forth, and then went back to watching the movie. Out of nowhere, all the lights and electricity goes out in the house, and they all start screaming their heads off, which is, I mean, an accurate response. The TV then comes back on blaring this awful noise, and at this point, the girls are hysterically crying. The TV then turns off, and when it turns back on, the display is completely black, except for the words, this is not a game anymore. I would have shot myself at that point. And at this point, everyone runs out of the house, completely forgetting their dog in there. When they finally build up the courage to come back, their dog was waiting on the front porch with the darkest eyes ever and the look of pure evil. Now at number two is Steve part one. So this one was shared by Reddit user KR Chrome. He said he was playing with a Ouija board with his friends when he was young. While they were playing, his nine year old bratty cousin came in asking to play and they said no because he was too young but that he was welcome to watch if he wanted to. He then snitched and told his mum who then walked in, shouted at all the kids, snapped the board in half and then stepped on the planchette. A month later, the user's aunt comes to visit again and she is not looking good, my friend. She's super pale, has bags under her eyes and is very nervous at everything that moves. Now, the cousin couldn't come since he had fallen down the stairs and was in the hospital. The aunt then shares with the user's mum that the last month has been absolutely awful for her. She's been hearing weird noises at night. The cousin is apparently obsessed with an imaginary friend called Steve, which, by the way, was the same spirit the kids were talking to when they were playing with the Ouija board. See how everything's just connecting together now? Things around her house had started breaking, her drapes randomly caught on fire despite no fire source nearby, and her son was in the room the whole time and claimed Steve did it. Not believing him, the aunt grounded him and woke up the next morning with scratches all over her arms, and it doesn't even end there. She shared that she was so paranoid someone was breaking into her house every night that she even called the police who found absolutely nothing. Paranoid with her kids still in the hospital, she moves in with the user's family family for a while. Cliffhanger, on to part two. And finally, at number one is Steve part two. So after the aunt moved in, the user and his family realized nothing was actually happening that was deemed odd. The aunt continued to see dark figures out of the corner of her eye, so nothing was going well for her she's like the victim of this whole scenario. When her son was discharged from the hospital, she continued seeing things, and one day she saw him in the reflection of the mirror and started shouting at him for not being at school, and then his reflection just vanished. Turns out he never even left school. Child Protective Services then came to the house to see if she was fit to take care of her son, and turns out she wasn't, and so she lost custody of her child, and she was also admitted to a mental hospital. This story has so many twists and turns, I'm actually sweating, you guys. Like, this is where, where is this going? The user and his family would visit her regularly and he eventually came clean and said her bad luck and deterioration was most likely because of her breaking the Ouija board and she went off. Flipping tables, screaming at the user, blaming it on him, she then went to grab a chair to attack him with it before an orderly came in and subdued her. A month later, she was found dead in the hospital because she had choked in her own room. They found a marble in her throat and weren't sure if it was accidental, whether it was self-inflicted, or whether Steve finally finished the job. Coming into number 10, we have the Mexican Possession. Americans 22-year-old Alexandra Huerto and her 23-year-old brother Sergio played with an Ouija board in a Mexican village along with their 18 year old cousin 
Fernando. It seems they were visiting family in San Juan Talacento at the time. It seems that the trio entered a trance like state with Alexandra later succumbing to growling. The boys were also said to show signs of possession saying that they were going blind and deaf and suffering hallucinations. The trio's story ended up in the Daily Mail where we can see pictures of the possessed young adults. It seems that they were admitted to hospital after a medical rescue. The town spokesman Victor Demessa said that it was very complicated. He said that the trio were suffering from involuntary movements which made transporting them difficult. Local priests refused to perform an exorcism on the American citizens as they weren't local churchgoers. The parents of the young adults said that they were saved with painkillers, anti-stress meds and eye drops. Whether or not they were actually possessed or they just convinced themselves that they were, we don't know. By the way, I have to say it was pretty terrifying. Coming into number 7 we have The Shattering. YouTuber Mellow Bird is known for his beliefs in the paranormal. His whole YouTube channel is made up of videos of ghosts, ghouls and other paranormal occurrences. In one video he is seen playing with an Ouija board, so only this happens. Have a look. Okay, let's have a look even slower and see what we think. Is this legit? Honestly, it really does seem to shatter. It also seems that he had a very angry poltergeist in the room, like, yikes. This is, I guess, why you don't play with Ouija boards. I don't want glass in my hand. Coming into number six, we have the McDonald's Ouija board. In 2014, this image of a Happy Meal was circulated online. Now, it seems that the fast food giants were embracing Halloween by experimenting with spooky and marketing. The only thing is, well, how appropriate is it to give your kids a tool to contact the dead? A cider seance with your burger and fries? Like, I don't know. Honestly, it's not very appropriate at all, but it does turn out it was just a joke by actress and paranormal investigator Amy Bruni. That being said, hundreds of thousands of people believed it when her post on Facebook went viral. Scarily for Amy, the joke resulted in her receiving actual death threats. In August 2014, Amy tweeted, True story, more than one person has wished death on me and my family because I posted the McDonald's Ouija board Happy Meal joke. I don't know, the internet's a sensitive place. Save your jokes. Save them. Okay, that may have been a joke, but bear this in mind. At number five, we have the best seller. Scarier than a lot of things on this list, Hasbro Games, the kids' board game company behind Operation, Bop It, Connect Four, and Hungry Hungry Hippos, actually own the rights to Ouija boards these days, and they're a big bestseller. Mediums are particularly disturbed by the success of the game, claiming that it is not a toy. Over the Christmas 2014 period, the game saw a particular upsurge in sales. Should we be worried? Worried that more and more people are contacting the dead as a means of entertainment. Honestly, I think so. Coming into number four, we have With You. On BuzzFeed, editors asked members of the BuzzFeed community to write in their scary Ouija experiences. They then made a post compiling the responses. Now, this story jumped out from Josie C41. She wrote, I got my board after months of harmless paranormal activity in my house. When I contacted something, the planchette started doing figure of eights across the board, which is a a huge no no. That means something demonic was present. I didn't touch it for months, but when I tried again, I asked where the spirit was in the room. It was at that point that she said her vision went spotty. She said, I saw a vivid image in my head jerking back, and the words with you were whispered into my ear by something I couldn't see. Woo! She went on to say that she sold the board, and honestly, I can't blame her. This is not what you want at all. Like, can you even imagine? You already think you're going mad, but you buy an Ouija board just to make sure that you are being haunted, then it turns out that you are. There's a spirit, and it's not even a nice one, it's a nasty one. Coming into number three, we have Zozo. Zozo is said to be a demon that regularly pops up when people use Ouija boards, and he is not a good presence. Zozo was first brought into wider public knowledge when a man named Darren Wayne Evans mentioned him on a message board called The True Ghost Tales. The thread from Evans was intended to warn others about the dangers of using an Ouija. He said, during my experience with Ouija boards, Boards, one particular spirit always seemed compelled to make its presence known. Its name is Zozo. He continued the post by saying, Today I refuse to even pronounce its name, as I believe the mere pronunciation of it can cause it to manifest itself. Too many times to count, it has at first pretended to be a nice spirit, or pretended to be whomever I was trying to contact, but eventually it showed its true 
himself, cussing me, threatening me and others present in the room. He also wrote that the demon attacked his family and caused him extreme bouts of bad luck. While some skeptics believe that Evans made up the demon, it seems that other mentions of Zozo have cropped up from unlucky Ouija users. It is thought that Zozo may be another name for the demon Pazuzu, the demon suspected in the Roland Doe case, the inspiration behind the Exorcist movie. Experts say that you know you're in the company of Zozo if the planchette is moving to the Z, or drawing a figure of 8 between the Z and the O. Zozo is also said to sometimes leave scratches on people's bodies. Starting us off at number 10, Reddit user Ted Corp and his story, Not a Clock in the Room. This one is short and sweet and absolutely terrifying. Personally, I don't believe in ghosts or spirits much, and it seems that was the case with Ted over here. One night, Ted, his girlfriend, and her friend were all hanging out and decided to pull out a Ouija board. They were just messing around and asking questions, not thinking much of it, until they felt they had an encounter with something. Deciding to test their theory, they asked what time it was. It's important to mention, there wasn't a clock, TV, VCR, watch, nothing in the room to tell time. Upon the spirit answering, or Ted thinking his girlfriend was messing around, Ted went to another room and realized the answer was completely accurate. So safe to say Ted is now a believer of ghosts and will never be the same man again. Coming in at number 9 is Pam's mother. So this girl called Pam grew up in a quite a religious household and honestly her life was pretty stable for the most part until her mum started using a Ouija board. Pam came home after a few weeks of being away to find her mother a completely changed woman. From a pleasant soft spoken person, she became scary. Her mum started consulting her Ouija board before making any decision and would take it with her everywhere she went. One night Pam was trying to fall asleep but she had a sinking feeling that she was being watched and she wasn't wrong. Her mum was in the corner of her room and when Pam started complaining about her fear, she said she hoped God was watching over her. Her mum then laughed and said something was definitely protecting her but it wasn't God. Later the same night, Pam heard what sounded like a party going on downstairs. At 3am she walked downstairs to see the planchette on the board moving by itself and her mother sitting behind it with multiple voices coming out of her. They were male, female, demonic, you name it, they were coming out of her. After she went to bed, Pam found the board and burnt it which did nothing to stop her mum who then went out and just bought another one. After her mum died the board disappeared from the house but Pam believes she's still being haunted by whatever her mum summoned. Now at 8 a story by anonymous person titled if you play with fire. This one is short and sweet as well yet absolutely terrifying and for the sake of context we'll name her Jessica. 10 out of 10 a life is ruined here. So our friend Jessica here played with a Ouija board not thinking much of it getting dark and scary replies from names she didn't know. One claimed to be Jessica's uncle but she didn't think much of of it. Jessica would play with the homemade Ouija board quite regularly and a few weeks later things got weird. Out one night at a club, Jessica claims she ran into an old friend she hadn't seen in two years and he told her he's got something weird to tell her. I quote, I went to see a reader. She told me that she had a message for a friend of mine, a woman. She said your name. She told me to tell you to stop playing with the Ouija board because you are going to get burnt. Does that make sense to you? End quote. Following the incident, Jessica claims to have never touched a board again and is permanently scarred. Filling out number 7 slot is Cindy. Now Cindy was a 13 year old girl. The middle child of six kids from a very devout Christian family that lived in northern Maine. While she was in the 8th grade, one of her friends let her borrow her Ouija board that weekend and so that night Cindy and her sisters started asking it questions. Knowing their parents would think it was sacrilegious, they did it at night in secret with nothing but a candle on. After they were done, there was something about the board Cindy couldn't stop thinking about. She started becoming obsessed and making a list of questions she wanted to ask the spirit. Now, there was an hour after school every day where Cindy was the only one home so every day she started using the Ouija board. The planchette spelled out hi and that its name was Jake, which was freaky as hell considering she had a friend called Jake who had died in a car crash when they were in fourth grade. She then asked if it was really him, to which the board spelled out yes. The two continued talking for the next few days, but the conversation started getting darker and angrier and Cindy realized she maybe wasn't talking to Jake after all. Two weeks later, the entity finally told her it was a demon that if she told anyone, it would kill her. That night, the family found Cindy in the corner of her room crying and she was later admitted to a mental facility to recover from the emotional damage she incurred. And at the number 6 spot, a story from reddit user Link and the TARDIS. So Link's cousin started a fire in their grandmother's basement. Not sure if it was accidental or the kid is an arsonist, but either way that's irrelevant. All of their games including a Ouija board were kept under a sofa which was in the basement. The fire managed to burn everything to a crisp. All that was left of the basement were ashes and the Ouija board. That's right, the couch and all the other games burnt to the ground, but the Ouija board and the box itself weren't singed. I don't know how you explain this, but it's quite certain that board is the work of the devil and needs to be taken back down to hell where it came from. Now at 4, a story from Reddit user MillieBob35. Millie explains how they are from Edinburgh, which is famous
famous for having an underground city. Decided to be adventurous, Millie and her friend decided to spend the night and were drawn to the Ouija board, one of the activities available. I guess this underground city is almost an amusement of sorts. Regardless, for about 30 minutes, the board was informing them of who haunted the location. Eventually, Millie asked if she could leave, to which the board said yes. 10 minutes later, when Millie's friend asked if she could leave, the board said no. The movements on the board got faster and more erratic, and even the room's temperature dropped. It took a handful of people in the room alongside Millie and her friend to start crying for this thing to let everyone go. Following the incident, Millie won't go near another board, and I really don't blame her. Filling our number three slot is Tom. Years ago, there was a group of three middle school boys, Tom, Josh, and Chris. Tom used to always punch and bully Josh to the point he'd get bruised and also call him names. But although Chris didn't like it, he just stayed silent so he wouldn't be hit as well. One summer, the boys found a Ouija board in the trash and took it to Tom's house. Tom's mum had passed away years prior, and his dad was never home since he was always working. Either way, the three had their hands on the planchette, and after 20 minutes of literally nothing happening, they were about to give up. But then the planchette abruptly spelt out, get away. Tom was like, get away, I live here. And the planchette spelled out, now. Chris was like, where should we even go? And the entity spelled out, it hurts. Tom then asked one of them to ask a question only they would know the answer to, so Josh immediately asked who keeps hitting him. The planchette spelled, ask Tom, and then spelled out dad. Chris was like, I think this question is for Tom, and so the board spelled out dad again and again. Tom then runs to the other room and starts crying, and it was only then did Tom admit that his dad physically and verbally on the daily, and somehow the Ouija board knew that. When they asked who the entity was, it spelled out mom. Now at number two, Ouija prediction. When Inez was 12 years old, she and her friend Becky decided it was Ouija time in her house located in Cambridge, Minnesota. Middle of the day, the girls were using the Ouija board Inez got for Christmas, and they asked what Inez was in her past life. The board answered, spelling out Rebecca Lynn Peltzer Miller was there. Inez had no idea who this was, so she didn't think much of it, and asked the board if she'll meet anyone from her past life here. The board answered yes, and then upon the girls asking who, the board spelled out Vincent Daniel Douglas. Fast forward two years, Inez has yet to meet someone with this name. She joins a production of the musical Annie, and the lead opposite her was named Danny Douglas. Inez claims, although the two had never met before, she felt as if she had known him her entire life. Upon remembering her Ouija board encounter, Inez asked if Danny Douglas was his real name, to which he replied that his first name was Vincent, and the name was a family name that was passed down through generations. Talk about life changing. And finally, at number one is Jen. So this was shared by Reddit user So Wake Up, and she said when she was a kid, her and her other friends played with a Ouija board in their friend's attic. There was a boy that lived down the street from them that had sort of disappeared, and the user wanted to know what had happened to him. So when they asked the board who they were speaking to, it spelled out Jeremy, which was the boy's name. It then went on to spell out some nonsense before spelling out the name Jennifer, and that freaked out the user and her friend since they both had the same name, which was Jennifer. But the board spelled out the user's first and last name, meaning it was her. The girls all took a step back from the board and then it started spinning in circles before spelling out you are dead, which I mean doesn't really leave much to the imagination does it? You are dead, pretty self explanatory. Then the board flew off the table, hit the door so hard that it actually full on broke. That night, when Jennifer went to sleep, she didn't wake up after that for three days. Her parents fully thought she was comatose or dead, but thankfully, she did wake up and whatever hold Jeremy had on her was gone, and thankfully, she's still alive. Starting us off with number 10 is The Affair. Now, this one is utterly wild, like, Damn, hell really hath no fury like a woman scorned. So back in 1935, a woman started consulting her Ouija board every week about her relationship with her husband. Now during these spirit consultations, the board kept telling her that her husband was having an affair with their neighbor and that he had apparently given this woman a lot of money, which to her credit, would make any wife mad, I'm sure. After every consultation, this girl would just give her husband a death glare and soon started torturing him. Weeks later, she tied him to the bedpost with wires and literally whipped his body with knotted ropes. This poor 78 year old man, like, he is old and this woman is torturing him. She also used a burning poker to brand him and used a knife to stab both his shins. It was only when she put a to his head that he confessed to everything she wanted to hear just so he could be free. Satisfied, she put the on the bedside table and at this point, still fearing for his life, the husband grabbed the his wife four times in the back, killing her instantly. He didn't go to jail since it was a justifiable homicide, which I agree with. I think that was justifiable. Fearing for your life? 
justified. Coming in at number 9 is The Devil. This one was shared by Reddit user BoWoop who said that grandma has completely banned Ouija boards from her house due to one incident that scarred her growing up. When she was younger, her and her friends decided to mess with a Ouija board and after asking who they were talking to, the planchette spelled out Satan. Which it's probably not the person you want to be talking to. Honestly, at that point, I would have been that SpongeBob meme where it's like, I am a head out. <laughs> nah, no Satan for me. After the revelation, the friend whose board it was started convulsing and foaming at the mouth for 10 straight minutes before stopping. After that point, the friend claimed there had always seemed to be this ominous presence lurking in that house up until the family finally moved. Not today, Satan. That's why I refuse to play with a Ouija board ever. I don't need that in my life. I'm smarter than that. I've done four videos on the case. Not happening. Filling at number 7 slot is Recess. This was shared by Patty Vasadi on Facebook who said when her son was in grade 4 he came home excited because he and his friends were playing with a Ouija board at recess. What the hell? I feel like I didn't even know what a Ouija board was in that grade. I barely was even human at that point. How was he playing with a Ouija board? Either way, the son shared that he and his friends were talking to a 13 year old boy who had apparently been alive during the Civil War. Now Patty was wary about the situation but brushed it off as nothing really serious. However, a few Two days later, her son had played again and came back to tell her that the spirit was telling them that they should join him and that they could all be friends. That's when Patty was like, oh hell no. That's when Patty was like, enough is enough, sweet Pete, enough is enough. And called the school and was like, nah, it's not on. Take that Ouija board away. These boys aren't playing with it anymore. And so they didn't. Now at number 6 is The Man. So this story was shared by Vince from Delaware who said this happened when he was little. His friends had peer pressured him into playing with a Ouija board but being a kid he didn't really expect anything major to happen with it. Ah Vince, young naive little Vince, you have no idea what's coming. After they started playing, the lights started flickering within 2 minutes and the air around them grew incredibly cold. They had apparently contacted the spirit of a Russian man named Orlov who had apparently been murdered. He never told them how he was killed but after that night Vince would have recurring nightmares about the scene of a murder that he clearly had never seen or even known about. Two decades later, he still gets those dreams sometimes. Olaf was like, why tell you when I can show you for the rest of your life? Good luck, Vince. I feel like that is a bit attention seeking from all of, he didn't have to do that. Coming in at number 5 is The Locker. This one was shared by 17 year old Liam from New Jersey. Now when he was a kid, Liam was at summer camp one year and him and his friends decided they wanted to play with a Ouija board but didn't have one on hand. So DIY Liam decided to draw and make one which I didn't think worked but apparently it does. You can just write it on a piece of paper and it's a Ouija board. Anyway, as soon as they started using it, the boys had a loud knocking coming from inside one of the lockers at the camp. Apparently a boy had drowned in the lake at that camp years prior and had used that specific locker. Either way, it's safe to say Liam did not go back the next year and probably none of his friends did either. We're not doing that. At number 4 is The Family. So this one was shared by Michelle Castillo Fernandez on Facebook who said this happened to her brother's friend. He played with a Ouija board at his house and everything literally went to sh show completely. His family started seeing marbles and coins being thrown around the house and rolling over the floors. The weirdest incident was when the mum was in the yard and saw a dog. So obviously she called out to it and when it turned around it had the face of an older man. Like that is not the kind of dog I'm calling. I'm just just want to pet it, you know? We're not looking for that. Things got progressively worse to the point they had to summon a priest to exercise the house. But even then, it's not the house the entity was attached to, it's the family. They still see black shadow figures follow them wherever they go and it's been years since the incident. Filling at number 3 slot is the blackout. So this one was shared by Ashley Elaine who said when she was about 15 years old, her grandma asked her to use a Ouija board to try and contact her uncle who had died at birth. Now initially it did seem like they were talking to the uncle but after after a while the personality of the entity changed and got darker, it started getting cruel and possessive and eventually spelled out that it had her uncle and was coming for her next. As soon as it moved to the last letter, Ashley blacked out for a full minute. When she finally regained consciousness, all the light bulbs in her house had popped and there was glass everywhere. She did not play again. She was like, nah grandma you do it next time, I'm not doing your dirty work. Did he pass out there? 
Sage Norms got me. Now at number 2 is the ex. So this was from an anonymous guy who shared a session where the Ouija board actually caused him and his ex girlfriend to break up. Despite playing with one 3 years prior, the ex believed the demon Zozo was haunting her. She got pregnant and at 5 months she decided to tell the guy that she thinks Zozo is haunting her and she ended up miscarrying the baby the next day which she blamed on the Ouija board incident. She claimed that she had a dream in which the demon told her he had stolen the soul of her baby. The ex started acting stranger and stranger and the last time they saw each other she was sitting in the middle of her room head down. When he called out to her she lifted her head and her eyes were fully black. First sign of demon, red flag should be going off. She then shouted what you want in a deep ass demonic voice and so the boy ran out. He still believes Zozo has indeed possessed his ex. Which I would have to agree with you. And finally, at number one is close the session. That is rule number one, you guys are playing with a Ouija board. Go wild, do you live your best life, but do not just get up and leave. Close the session, otherwise, the portal is just gonna be open for things you don't want coming out, coming out. Ain't nobody got time for that. So this tragic story was shared by Reddit user Cherry Candy who said this happened when she was in her first year of university. Her and her five friends started playing with a homemade Ouija board and they contacted a spirit whose name she's since forgotten. Either way, as they were talking to it, the doorbell rang so one of the friends left as her dad had come to pick her up. Now these friends didn't know they had to close the session so they just didn't do it. Rookie mistake. The friend that left early started acting weird in the upcoming weeks and stopped hanging out with the group altogether. Months later, she said she went to get a cleansing because she wasn't feeling herself and normal and the lady she went to screamed as soon as she stepped inside the room, claiming the friend had a spirit with her. The lady shared that the spirit the friends had contacted had started following the girl because the friends never closed the session. What am I telling you? Close the session. Starting off this countdown, we have Eliza. One day, a girl and her friends decided to fool around with an Ouija board. To make it 10 times worse, they decided that the perfect location to use it in would be the cemetery. So they went to the cemetery, set up the board in a clearing, and started asking it questions. At first, nothing really happened. Then all of a sudden, the planchette moved by itself and spelled out the name Eliza. They kept asking the board questions and found out that she was 54 when she passed away. Now the girls were thinking that one of their friends was just moving the planchette, so they weren't scared. That was until they packed up to leave. As they were leaving the cemetery, they stumbled upon a tombstone. It read, Eliza Taylor, 1862 to 1916. So they were in contact with a real spirit this whole time. And the last message that she sent to them was, don't go. She wanted them to all stay with her. In our ninth spot, we have George. When Reddit user Treeman was little, his mom invited him to play in a Ouija board with her. Not judging, but I am. Why? Why would you invite your kid to play? It's not a game. Anyways, he joined in and started spelling out joke words like poop and fart. He found it so funny. That was until her mom asked the board about her missing friend. He had been missing for a month or so and no one knew where he was. At first, the board spelt out George the name of the friend who went missing. The next thing it spelt out was Lake. About two weeks later, they found George's body. He had been hit by a car while on a bridge and his body fell into the lake below. The Ouija board literally solved this man's disappearance. In our eighth spot today, we have the creepy doll. So a couple of years ago, the narrator, his cousins, dad, and best friend were all using an Ouija board in their basement. Now, prior to using the board, they decided to move this creepy porcelain doll out from the basement and place it into another room. Good idea, you know, dolls creep me out. Plus, we've seen Annabelle, you know, we know that demons can inhabit dolls. Anyways, they began using the board, and at first, it wasn't working. That was until the planchette started moving randomly to random numbers. But these weren't any numbers. They were one of the guy's social security numbers. To make sure it wasn't a prank, they asked the board to show itself or to prove that it was really there with them. That's when it spelled out the word doll. They all immediately rushed into the other room where they had placed that porcelain doll. And as soon as they opened the door, they saw the doll standing right up in front of the door, staring right at them. If I was them, I would just never sleep again. That is horrifying. Moving on to number seven, we have Under the Car. This story was submitted by Reddit user No Springs. According to them, when they were 12 or 13, they decided to fool around with an Ouija board with their friends and his sister one night. 
They weren't taking it seriously at first. They all took turns moving the planchette to try and spook each other. That was until the board spelled out, I can see you through the window. And then it said, I can see you through his eyes. They kept asking it questions and it spelled out, I'm under the car. So they actually went outside and looked under their car. As soon as they did, a huge black cat leaped out and hissed at them. They all ran back inside the house and as soon as they did, the power failed. That's the last time they ever played with the Ouija board. Serves them right. In our sixth spot today, we have the death. This story was submitted by Turtle Shell Magic on Reddit. So a couple of years ago, they were playing with an Ouija board with two of their friends. That's when they got in contact with a spirit. They asked it how it died, which first off, you're not supposed to do that, but they did it anyway. It spelt out the word murder. They then asked it how it was murdered. And it said, not I. That's when the room started to get heavy. The energy shifted completely and the friends knew that something was wrong. Then out of nowhere, the planchette flew from out underneath their hands and it flew across the room. They immediately stopped playing. Then a week later, one of the friend's moms died unexpectedly. Another one of the friend's mom was hospitalized and the narrator's mom had an emergency hysterectomy. They believe that whoever they summoned that night came after their moms and murdered the one mother. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Roger. Back in the 90s, Reddit user Ouija1993 had some girls in his ninth grade class say that they've been playing with an Ouija board. They told him that they've been in contact with a spirit named Roger. So he decided to join them after school one time to see if they were being serious or if it was Cap. At first, he wasn't buying it and thought the girls were just moving the planchette by themselves. So he decided to ask the board a question that only he should have known the answer to. He had just gotten his grade back from a science test, so he asked the board what his mark was. And the board got it right. So he believed that it was real and they continued on playing with the board. That was until the board kept calling one of the girls the B word, like it really hated her. But it seemed to have a liking towards him. Eventually they learned that Roger had been stabbed to death. After that night, the guy decided to go home and look for any murders in the area involving a man named Roger. And sure enough, he found the spirit that they had been talking to. His name was Roger Stevenson, a 35-year-old man who was stabbed to death during a robbery gone wrong. His attacker's name was Sam. Remember that girl that Roger didn't like and kept calling a b Well, her name was Sam. Coming in at number four, we have the entity. Like I said, you don't want to play with Ouija boards. You run the risk of unleashing some evil entity or demon, which is exactly what happened to this next user. So they were using the board all by themselves and they didn't say goodbye to it properly. After that, they kept feeling as if something was watching them. Then weird things started happening. Doors would open and close on their own. They would hear footsteps in the house. Sometimes they would even wake up in the middle of the night to their covers being pulled off of them. Not only that, but the Ouija board would sometimes disappear only to reappear somewhere else days later. Eventually, it got so bad that she needed to get her house blessed. She had her hair pulled, her body scratched, and she was even choked. One time, she even saw the entity appear in the corner of her room. It presented itself as a dark mass. Needless to say, this is a great example as to why you don't mess with the paranormal. Coming in at number three, we have the instructions. In 1983, Bunny Dixon, her boyfriend Anthony Hall, and another couple were fooling around with the Ouija board when it gave them a very specific set of instructions. It told them to flee their home and join a carnival in Virginia. It also told them to rob and murder a motorist in order to get enough money to follow through with this plan. So they did what the board asked them to. They killed a motorist and robbed him and fled. But eventually the couples turned on each other and were all arrested. They tried to blame the board for their actions, but that did them no good and they were all convicted of murder. Moving on to number two, we have the sacrifice. In 1995 in London, two young boys, Michael McCallum and Michael Eridge, decided to play with an Ouija board. While playing with the board, it spelled out kill. McCallum took this as a sign to kill the other Michael. He thought that he was in contact with Satan and that he was making a sacrifice for him. In the end, he was charged with manslaughter and served his time inside of a mental institution. And in our number one spot today, we have the wood chipper. One day, this narrator was talking to her great aunt and got on the topic of marriage. 
She then asked her why she was never married. And apparently when she was 16, she did have a pretty serious boyfriend. One night she was using a Ouija board and asked it if he would be the man she would marry. The board responded with no. She then asked it if they would break up. It also said no. So she asked if one of them was going to die. It responded with yes. She asked it if it was her or her boyfriend and it said goodbye. A week later, the boyfriend was in a wood chipper accident at the mill where he worked and he passed away. The Ouija board had predicted this. Moving on to number nine. Oceana is certainly braver than I am because one night she decided to pull out a Ouija board when she was all alone. I don't think I could do a Ouija board in a room full of people, let alone completely alone. Once she got started, she of course started asking questions with her hands placed on the planchette, hoping for some kind of answer or contact, but unfortunately for her, nothing happened. She began to move on from the board and took her hands off the planchette and got up to pack the board away when the planchette began to move around on its own. I could not imagine how frightening that would be. I don't even know what I would do in that situation other than absolutely freeze. Moving on to number eight. When Tammy was a kid, her and her sister would often use Ouija boards, and it always seemed that they would end up communicating with the same spirit who was named Ed. Ed apparently wasn't super nice because he would continually threaten their younger brother, who was only around five years old during the time, and he was never with them during the times that they were using the board. Eventually, they got creeped out enough that they got rid of the board and just put Ed behind them. A few years later, when their little brother got older, he had used a Ouija board with his friend a couple of times, and he came home to tell his older sisters a story that had freaked him out. He explained that every time him and his friend used the board, there kept being a spirit named Ed who was threatening him. Apparently their mother ended up banning the use of Ouija boards in the house, which really is the right move. Moving on to number seven. This one is honestly what old camp creepy stories are made of. When Liam was a kid, he always was lucky enough to go to summer camp. One year, him and his friends decided they wanted to mess around with a Ouija board and see if it could really contact the spirit world or not. They didn't have a Ouija board with them, so they drew one on a piece of paper and decided to give it a try. Apparently, as soon as they started using it, a banging started coming from inside one of the lockers. I'm not sure if the boys went to check to make sure nothing was in there, but either way, I would be absolutely terrified and probably would not want to go back to summer camp. Moving on to number six. This story comes from an anonymous source, but we'll call them Taylor. Taylor and their fiance, who we'll call Sam, were given a Ouija board that their friend had apparently found on the side of the road, which I feel like is the worst place to find a new Ouija board. Taylor and Sam decided to use it one night and began to ask questions. They asked who was with them and if they were an angel, demon, or spirit. It replied that their name was Mo and that they were a demon made by your creation. Taylor and Sam were obviously freaked out and just asked a few more simple questions like, what is your favorite poster of ours on the wall? replied with bloody mess. Taylor and Sam had a kiss poster with Gene Simmons on it that had blood everywhere all over it. Taylor pointed to that poster and asked, this one? Mo said yes. Taylor and Sam had a few skeleton heads that sat on their TV, so they asked Mo to move the skeleton heads so that they could prove Mo was real. Mo said to close their eyes, so they did. A few seconds later, all the skulls on the TV had moved to be facing them. Only Sam and Taylor were in the room at the time and they had been sitting right next to each other, which would have made it impossible for them to prank one another. Moving on to number five. When Paige was a kid, she moved into a new house that was way bigger, but also way older than the one that they had lived in before with her teenage sister and her mom. On the first night in the new house, the lady sat on the floor and ate pizza as you do when you move into a new house and Paige's sister convinced their mom to let them play play with a Ouija board. They started trying to make some sort of contact when a heavy box of books went flying across the living room out of nowhere. They also had a fireplace in the living room and earlier in the evening they had lit a fire in it. Right after the box flew across the room, the fire completely went out. Paige's mom was so freaked out that they all went and slept at their grandmother's house that night, which is probably for the best. Moving on to number four. This story comes from Becky during her first semester of college. I guess a good icebreaker for some new roomies might be contacting the dead to see how everyone reacts. At least this must have been what Becky and friends thought before they tried it out. The college students brought out a Ouija board and right away strange things began to happen. Becky says that the first weird thing was that the lights started flickering and then they lost power. The power loss was due to a car hitting a pole on the street. This definitely could have just been a strange but eerie coincidence, but maybe it was a message or signal from the afterlife. 
Either way, I don't think Becky decided to revisit Ouija boards again after that experience. Moving on to number three. This story comes from a person named Jill and is a memory that has always stuck with them from a day in sixth grade. Jill's class was learning about ESP and those sorts of things, and of course it really intrigued a lot of the class. Jill and a couple of friends decided to get a Ouija board and play around with it. They had two friends with their hands on the planchette and their eyes closed and one other friend who was writing down the answers. They seemed to contact a spirit and were asking questions and getting answers. This would be a normal Ouija board experience until they asked the spirit for their name. As it turns out, one of the friends had an aunt with the same name who had passed away. It seems as though they may have accidentally contacted their relative who had passed away, which is both kind of scary, but also could be really nice and comforting. Moving on to number two. One day when this Reddit user was around 16 years old, they found a real old school wooden Ouija board at a thrift store. I probably would have run in the opposite direction direction, but they ended up purchasing it. Later that evening, they and a friend decided to try it out and asked a few questions, but never got a response. They of course got bored and left the Ouija board out on the bed and headed out of the house to go and get some snacks. This was all fine until they came back to the house. When they got back, they realized that the planchette was now moving, but completely on its own. The word foul was being spelled out over and over again, and the two just stared at it in absolute awe. Eventually, they grabbed the board, broke it and covered it with salt before they got rid of it in a safe place. I definitely think that experience was probably the last time they ever used a Ouija board. Moving on to number one. One day a woman named Abby had been playing around with a Ouija board for a while and then put it away. That night as she was getting ready for bed she noticed that her computer screen changed from black to blue which meant that it had been turned on somehow when she hadn't even touched it. She turned the computer off again and it once again turned itself on. That is already super strange and creepy, but she chalked it up to some kind of glitch and just unplugged the computer. The computer, of course, somehow begins to start up again even though it was unplugged. Abby ended up burying the Ouija board in her backyard, but I'm not convinced that will help. I think once you open the communication, you might have to deal with the consequences. Starting us off at number 10 is a sleep paralysis demon. If you've never heard of sleep paralysis before, it's essentially a horrible phenomenon where your mind is conscious but your body is unable to move or speak, and often the mind will hallucinate. Part of these hallucinations is the sleep paralysis demon, which creepily most describe the exact same way. And it's one thing to have sleep paralysis on a regular basis, it's a total totally other eerie and spooky thing when you only get it after playing with a Ouija board. According to one Reddit user, that is exactly what happened to him. From a now deleted account, the story explained, quote, My buddy and I found a Ouija board at my girlfriend's house. We were really bored, so we went to this graveyard by my house to see if it actually worked. As suspected, nothing happened. We brought the board back to my house and didn't think anything of it. The next day, strange things began happening happening. Out of nowhere, my friend started having sleep paralysis every time he spent the night at my house, despite never having it before. The first time he saw a tall woman with long black hair standing in the corner of a room facing the wall. The next time he was asleep on the couch and he saw the same woman standing at my open door looking directly into my room. I mean, could it be a coincidence? Maybe. But still, if it were me, that Ouija board would be taken away as far as possible. Coming in at number 9 is a man-faced dog. It's one thing when you use a board and start seeing things, but to me it seems like a whole other ordeal when someone else uses one and other people around them start noticing strange things. I guess I just mean that if you are expecting to see something weird, the chances are you'll start to find the strange in the ordinary around you. But when you weren't involved in the session, or better yet had no idea it happened, then seeing inexplicable things just hits different. For example, one redditor from a now deleted account posted saying, quote, My brother's friend played with one at his house and all hell broke loose. Their family would see pennies and marbles being thrown down the hallway. One day his mom was doing yard work and saw a dog and when she called the dog she said that it suddenly had an old man's face. Things got so awful that they had to call a priest to do an emergency exorcism. To this day they still see black shadow figures follow them around. I mean, there are many things I would like to go my whole life without seeing, and a shape-shifting man-faced dog is definitely one of them. Next up at number 8, 
levitating. Even if you tend to lean toward a believer side, I think it's safe to say that there are some things that can be explained away. Objects flying across the room could be due to a gust of wind from an open window. Lights flickering could be faulty wiring. Strange noises could be creaks or cracks in the floorboards and so on. But if there's one thing I would have a hard time explaining away, it would be witnessing something or someone free floating in the air. Well, as it so happens, one anonymous Reddit user said that when they were in the 10th grade, they had an experience just like that that shook them to the core. According to them, quote, in the 10th grade at a Halloween party, four of us were playing with one. The planchette suddenly lifted straight off of the board and raised all of our hands at least a foot into the air, then dropped. We all jumped out of our chairs and ran away screaming. I mean, I don't blame them. I used to get freaked out if the planchette even moved, so I have no idea what I would do if it levitated off the ground. Just another reason to stay away from these terrifying boards. Coming in at number seven, a possessed cat. According to those who practice magic, there are lots of different precautions that can and should be taken before you begin a session with a Ouija board. But the problem is that Ouija boards have been popularized so much so that anyone can get their hands on one. Like I've literally seen them for sale in a Walmart before. Obviously, most preteens don't know these rules, and so when they get their hands on one to play a goofy game, things get weird. According to one story I found on Reddit, they explain what happened to them when they were young. Quote, I was 13 years old and staying at a friend's house overnight. She had somehow managed to sneak a Ouija board past her super religious mom, and after her parents went to bed, we used it. We asked the board some typical 13 year old girl questions, nothing happened, and we went to bed. But that night, her mom's new kitten started acting weird. He was wailing and running head first into walls. We woke up to it sitting in the middle of the kitchen, twitching and staring off into space. That week they took it to the vet who said the kitten had a neurological problem and had to have it put down immediately. To this day, my friend and I are convinced that the kitten was possessed. I mean, I know there isn't a test that can be taken to check if the kitty really was possessed, but is it not suspicious that it only started acting acting like that after the Ouija board? Just saying. Coming in at number six, Fire Be Gone. There are lots of different horror movies involving the Ouija board, and honestly, for good reason. Just take a quick little Google search and you will be hit with a tsunami of stories about all the unexplainable things that have happened to people while using one or right after using one. One of these crazy stories came from a Reader's Digest from a girl named Paige and was about the first and last time she ever used a Ouija board. Quote, I was about six or seven and I was with my mom and older sister sister, who was about 15 at the time. The family had just moved into their new home, which they were really excited about because it was bigger than their old house, but it also happened to be much older. The first night in their new home, Paige was sitting with her sister and mom on the living room floor eating pizza, and they set up a fire in the fireplace. After dinner, her sister begged her mom to let them play with the Ouija board, and as Paige explained, quote, as we were using it, a box in the living room that had some books in it literally flew across the room. Next thing they knew, the fire went out in a flash, like full flames to nothing in a second. Apparently Paige's mom was so freaked out that she made them stop the game and took the girls to stay the night at their grandmother's house. I mean, I've heard of a lot of weird things happening, but a fire mysteriously going out in a flash would definitely send chills down my spine, and it for sure seems like it had something to do with the board. Coming in at number Number five, a creepy computer. It makes sense that as we progress as humans via technology, that the demons of other dimensions progress with us. For example, have you ever heard of the girl who claims that she was being texted by a demon that was possessing her? Well, at first it could sound a little woohoo. I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's a different world out there than it was hundreds of years ago, and so if they want to try and freak us out, they have to adjust to our new way of life. One of these creepy tech stories was posted online by someone named Abby, who said she was in her room one night after playing with a Ouija board earlier that day. But as she was getting ready for bed, her computer screen turned on completely by itself, changing from black to blue. Quote, I thought it was strange, but just turned off the computer and went to bed. But again, only moments later the computer turned back on again all by itself. Abby began to feel anxious, so she decided to just unplug it completely 
for peace of mind. Not 30 seconds goes by before the unplugged computer starts up again. I mean, if there's an explanation behind that, please tell me, because as far as I understand, that shouldn't be possible. Terrified that some kind of entity had been released into the realm via her Ouija games earlier that day, Abby buried her board in the backyard and never touched it again. Coming in at number four, Ouija made me do it. So there are lots of wild stories out there surrounding the elusive Ouija board, but the ones I always find the most terrifying are the people who claim they themselves were possessed by an entity through the board and were driven to extreme or even illegal measures. Whether you prescribe to these kinds of stories or not, Paul Carroll claims that a Ouija board ruined his entire life. As he tells it, he decided to use a Ouija board Christmas Eve of 2014 in an attempt to contact the dead, which apparently worked. Carol claims that through the session, an evil spirit possessed his family dog, Molly, and so he felt he was left with no choice but to take her life. While trying to dispose of the mutilated canine body, he was caught and arrested but the story doesn't stop there. Just one week after his guilty plea, Paul's wife and daughter also decided to use the family board. Apparently this time they were told that they were going to die and shockingly, the following day, both of them took an overdose of prescription drugs and set the house on fire. To everyone's surprise, the women ended up surviving the ordeal but were both jailed for arson, claiming just as Paul had that the Ouija board made them do it. Coming in at number three, an evil doll. Now, it wouldn't be a creepy list without a haunted evil doll, now would it? One doll meets Ouija board story in particular was posted to a Reddit thread that asked about scary paranormal encounters, and user Jake Nichols told the story about when he and his cousins used a Ouija board at their home when they were younger. Like any good Ouija session, they picked the creepiest room in any house to use the basement, but before they began, they decided it would be a good idea to remove the large creepy porcelain doll, so they took it to another room and placed it face down. Once the ball got rolling, the board started listing a string of numbers that Jake's cousin immediately recognized as his social security number, which no one else at the table knew. I mean, I have to admit, that is pretty specific and would definitely freak me out. But it was nothing compared to what happened next. When the group asked the spirit to prove itself, it promptly spelt the word D-O-L-L. At this point, the whole table is covered in goosebumps, and then they realize that they have to go and check on the doll in the other room. To their horror, when they opened the door, the large doll was standing upright in the middle of the room, staring right at them, almost as if it had been waiting for them to check up on it. Naturally, they burned the board, and no one in the family ever dared to play again. I just hope they also got rid of the doll. Coming in at number two, an evil demon. It's one thing to accidentally contact a spooky or taunting spirit, but according to one post I found online by an anonymous user, they accidentally let in a dangerous spirit that not only tortured them, but actually assaulted them on more than one occasion. Quote, it started out with that feeling like you're being watched, and doors closing, and footsteps on the hardwood when you're home alone, and progressed slowly into being kept awake by something shaking the bed or pulling off your cover sometimes even whispering your name. The board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places you never would have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then there was a black mass in the corner of the room, or the silhouette of a man watching you from the doorway. After that, it escalated quickly. I had my hair pulled, fingers pricked, scratched, choked, held down in bed, while this thing whispered in my ear what could have only been Latin. We had our house blessed, and the bad thing hasn't shown back up. Just the normal occurrences now. But I will never again play with one of those boards. Believe me, I would not either if that happened to me. And last up today in our number one spot, Carol Sue Elvaker. One of the scariest stories surrounding a Ouija board was the tragedy of Carol Sue Elvaker, a woman with no prior criminal record and no history of mental health problems seemingly out of nowhere, took the life of her son-in-law in February of 2001. According to Elvaker's story, she had used a Ouija board, which she claims sent her a message from the beyond. Now, now, I wasn't able to find exactly what she was using the Ouija board for in the first place, but 
Either way, what she heard in her session changed her life forever. The message essentially told her that her daughter's husband was possessed by an evil spirit and that he had to be taken down. So one night in February, Elvaker stabbed her son-in-law Brian Roach in his sleep and then continued on attempting to take the life of the rest of her daughter's family by bundling them up in her car and trying to get into a car crash. I should also mention her daughter was charged for accessory to the crime as she hid the knife and then seemed to aid in getting her family into the car. Thankfully, no one else in the family was killed, but after the instigated car crash, Elvaker broke both her ankles and stripped naked before making a run for it into the woods. During her trial for the ordeal, she claimed that God had spoken to her through the board to kill Brian, and essentially, had no remorse. Unsurprisingly, this did not hold up in court, and so Carol Sue Elvaker was deemed criminally insane and sent to live in an institution. All right, so starting off this countdown at number ten, we have possession. We were just talking about it, so I don't know which idiot would even do this, but never ask a demon to possess you. What? But people actually do that. People do ask the demon to possess them. <laughs> Spirits just love possessing humans anyway, so the fact that some idiot would be dumb enough to actually invite them to do so is like a free pass. They will do it, and you will lose your free will, as a spirit will literally live in you as you. You don't even know what entity you're dealing with on the other side. You could literally be asking Beelzebub to possess you, and you'd have no one to blame but yourself. I mean, in my opinion, it's pretty obvious to not ask the board about possession or for a spirit to possess you, but you'd be surprised about the number of people that actually ask these questions. Seriously, you think it's cool to start foaming at your mouth and have blood pouring out from your eyes as you start crawling on all fours? Nah, you are getting <laughs> sent straight to an asylum where you will spend your life locked away. I just don't like when they crawl on all fours. How do you a? So how do you do that with your? How do you do that? How do you do that? That's actually. Their spine is like in half. Oh, like, no. I don't know how spirits do that. Coming in at number nine is illness. I don't know why I said it with a smile, but we're gonna go with this. Now, when you're communicating with spirits in the afterlife, a very common question anyone would wanna ask is about their own health. I mean, their ghosts. Surely they know more sh than we do. I mean, that's the least I expect. Now, you're there using the board, hoping to find out if you're getting sick, if you're already sick, if someone you love is sick, or so on. And I get it. Why wouldn't you wanna know in advance so you could prevent it? But multiple paranormal experts alike claim you shouldn't ask. Ask Ouija board questions regarding disease, illness, treatment, or anything like that, and they have good reason to think so. For one, the entity you could be talking to could have died in like 1864, meaning they have zero knowledge of modern healthcare practices and could probably misdiagnose you and tell you have like the bubonic plague when you really just have bronchitis. Secondly, the answer could stress you out and not even be true, and the stress would then weaken your immune system and get you sick, aka the whole thing would turn into a self fulfilling prophecy. All in all, don't do it, lads. At number 8 we have the future, and believe me, we know how tempting it would be to ask a Ouija entity about your future, like I wanna know so many things, when will I get married, to who, what will life be like, will Trump ever get impeached, etc, but you shouldn't do it. Things change all the time, the future isn't set in stone, so what could the entity even tell you? I mean, that honestly really depends on what you believe. Muslims believe that your life is pre-written, so there's a course your life is meant to follow, whereas others believe it's constantly changing. And spirits may not have all the answers that we're looking for. I mean. I don't think they have harnessed the power of time travel. As a result, whatever answers you get from them, probably made up. Maybe they say something extremely terrifying, like that we all die from a big pandemic. <clears throat> Mm. That's too close to home, Lindsay. <laughs> Sorry. It's too soon to make those jokes. <laughs> Knowing this information would probably scare the crap out of you and drive you insane. Not only this, but maybe you will contact a demon that purposely wants to mess with your head. And so they will say some messed up things about the future just to scare you. Like I'm already battling with so many already internal demons, I don't need any more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Goodbye. <laughs> Making our way down the list at number 7, we have the cause of death. When using a Ouija board, you are communicating with a once living soul. If you begin prying into their personal life, it may upset them, especially if you start asking questions about how they died. I think it's safe to say that they probably don't enjoy being dead, and so they will probably be very uncomfortable if you start asking them about it. Keep in mind, you're the living one and they aren't. They are jealous that you are still alive and that they are no longer. If you keep asking them questions about death, then they may become upset. And that's the last thing you want to do, make a spirit angry. How would you feel if you suffered a tragic death and next thing you know, a little 16 year old named Brittany is fooling around with the board making jokes about your death? I know that would piss me off. 
and who knows what kind of abilities they have. Anger them enough and they could make you pay. This is exactly what happened to a group of friends. Apparently they summoned a spirit with the board and started asking intimate questions about their death. Next thing you know, the spirit knocked over a candle and that caught a bunch of paper towels on fire and half of the kids living room got burnt down. So. Just saying. Okay, now at number six are jokes. Now this one made me laugh before I even started talking about it, honestly, and I know I didn't do it, but in my head I did. Now look, I totally get it. You're sitting there, barbecue sauce on your titties, and you think to yourself, now I could wipe this sauce off, or I could just play with a Ouija board. You go with the latter, your friends are all over, barbecue sauce on their titties as well, and the one class clown in your group is feeling rather funny and thinks it's smart to start the session off with a joke. First of all, RIP, because that kid's getting possessed and killed first, but secondly, Ouija and Entities cannot take a joke. They probably don't even know what a joke is. It's not in their purgatory vocabulary. All they know is death and suffering. Do you really think the entity is just gonna flicker the lights or something to signal to you that they laughed? No, they're gonna send a piece of window shard straight through your eye, mate. <laughs> I was just thinking of a ghost being like, ha. Ah. <laughs> Honestly, exactly what she said. I mean, maybe they could do like a knock knock joke, but still, nothing is funny when it comes to the spirit world. It needs to be taken pretty seriously. What if like the entity is trying to make a joke by like lighting something on fire? Or something, it's like we have different definitions yeah, of humor. Exactly. <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> Coming in at number five is murder. I understand that spirits and entities on the other side of the Ouija board kind of get a bad rep. We've seen the movies, we've heard the stories. Hell, I did like a five part series on Ouija boards that destroyed lives, so believe me when I say these spirits are not received well. But the one cardinal rule of Ouija boards, other than always closing your session, is to never ask the entity if they're going to kill you. Firstly, it's bloody rude. You can't just generalize all Ouija spirits and assume the one you're talking to is evil and full of bloodlust. Spirits have feelings too, and and some are actually nice. Some just want to talk, like how about you ask them how their day was for once? Purgatory sucks, sh okay, sorry. I digress. <laughs> this question could also be viewed as disrespectful towards the spirit which could anger them and make them overstay their welcome. Or if they weren't planning to kill you before, they probably are now. So adios amigo. Coming in at number four is the spirit's presence. There's a lot of people out there that want to witness paranormal activity firsthand. We like to call these people crazies. No, I'm just kidding. I, I understand where they're coming from. Like, no, I would shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> like in order to make up their mind about whether or not ghosts are real, they kind of need to experience it firsthand. Hand. But whatever you do, do not ask a spirit to show themselves or to make noise. There's way too many scary movies out there where this happens and they are greeted with a terrifying pop up of a disfigured face. So, do you really want to see that? Definitely not. I would for sure defecate on the spot. Now sometimes a spirit isn't malevolent and shows you it's there by opening a door or manifesting a gust of wind, but most spirits are dark and will manifest by possessing your friend or throwing the board against the wall. They're already answering your questions by moving the planchette. You don't need to disrespect them further by being like, oh, can you just confirm you're real and not a myth? <laughs> Cheers. Mm -hmm. 